So we're gonna be testing FastSteel 2.0 and comparing it to our new FastSteel Plus, which is a layered steel shot shell. So it's a very efficient process. Everything's centrally located, boom, right through. Yes. Quick. Everything we do is designed to, to give the end user an edge in the field. So where did it all start? Started in 1997 after these uh, individuals who were uh, members of a duck hunting club outside of Detroit, Michigan, kind of realized that there was, there had to be a better way uh, to hunt ducks and geese after the uh, lead shot ban. And they pooled their resources and figured out, uh, learned of a product or a metal alloy uh, where you took tungsten powder and, and would bind it with polymer to basically mimic lead, okay? So that was the creation, the idea that started Kent cartridge that was the idea yes because the the products at the time and and you really have to go back in time and realize that the ammunition companies at the time didn't fully understand how to load steel shot shells okay and the products were ad admittedly substandard out there they they were not effective on on game birds and and these folks knew it and wanted to do something about it and they had the they had the entrepreneurial spirit to go and actually do that heavy lifting, figure out if that metal alloy at Penn State could actually be turned into number three, number one, number two, number five shot pellets and actually hold up under, you know, pressures of being shot by, you know, shot out of the shotgun barrel. And, and they did all that research, which is uh, pretty, pretty breathtaking uh, considering these guys were, they were not in the ammunition industry. Mm -hmm. They were in the concrete industry or they were, you know, they were police officers or they, uh, you know, they, they were in several different industries and were able to really do the legwork to come up with a revolutionary product like what we call Tungsten Matrix where it's, uh, it's, a, lead, uh, it's a lead clone that's non-toxic. Yeah. So today I'm here with Jeff Berry, VP of Sales and Marketing from Kent Cartridge. We're in the home of Kent Cartridge in West Virginia, and we're gonna be talking about the history, we're gonna talk about the factory, you know, how the shells are made, and all the cool stuff that Kent does to make, you know, to keep their standards high and make great shot shells. So these guys have figured out a way to, to clone like a, a lead style shot, uh, non-toxic tungsten and polymer mixed, and that was in 97, and they figured out how to produce it here in West Virginia. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, actually the shot is produced in the UK. They, pro they, yeah. they acquired a company in the UK to produce the shot and then ship it over here to a facility to load the ammunition that they acquired. And what was, what was great about that is the company that was going out of business had a qualified workforce uh, that knew how to load high performance shot shells. Mm -hmm. So these individuals who were successful in other industries had a workforce already trained to know how to develop loads to, to load shotgun shells to high standards. And so that was one, one benefit of coming here to West Virginia and purchasing the, uh, the loading facility that they did. So that was uh, a little fortuitous uh, uh, to be able to uh, retain that workforce. And because yeah. uh, the previous company, Active, uh, really did push the envelope with, uh, uh, with technology and, and load development. So it really led into some of the things that we've done at Kent since Tungsten Matrix, like pioneering speed technology and steel shot shells, uh, uh, for one example. So after 97 and, and the Tungsten Matrix creation, would what did Kent go to next? Uh, was it was it steel or lead or like lead upper right. loads or anything? Or yeah, so even back in 1997, tungsten was was at the high end of of the price points. They were in 10 round boxes. Uh, most or, or several hunters were looking for different alternatives other than tungsten, and Kent realized that to be more than just a niche company, that they needed to they needed a volume play and steel shot shells were gonna provide that volume. And there was some discussion amongst the founders of Kent Cartridge. Well, hey, we got into this business because steel doesn't work very well. And, and one of them had the bright idea, hey, steel will work just fine if you push the velocities higher. And he's, he was 100% right. It steel's lower density than lead, so it's lighter, okay? And so to give it the effective energy you need on the birds, you, you need to make it go faster. And 
what they did was they started working with our current powder supplier, our exclusive powder supplier that we've been working with for 26 years on how to create custom powder blends that push steel to the velocities you need to make it effective, but also do it within safe pressures and consistent pressures across the temperature spectrum. And that was another thing where Kent was industry leading was, was the development of these powders specific to steel shotgun shells and how to balance, there's a lot to balance delicately uh, with steel because of the velocities you need to get it to and still maintaining safe pressures. And they did that masterfully and uh, launched Fast Steel in 1998. And really that's where Kent is off and running because not only do you have a revolutionary product in Tungsten Matrix and that, that's at the top end of the price point, you have something that in Fast Steel that hits pretty much, uh, pretty much everyone. It's a, they kept it affordable, okay? So yes, it was a little more uh, pricey than opening price point products, but it wasn't priced at a super premium. And so you hit a large, uh, a large swath of, uh, of hunters with that product. I think it was the right move. That's where we try to position most of our products uh, even today, is we try to maintain affordable, premium performance at affordable price points. Yeah. So let's go through some of the years between now and Fast Steel and talk about what what loads were, were brought to the market and, and we're gonna catch up today's date. Um, so from Fast Steel, what came next? Yeah, one, one of the products that we introduced after that was, okay, so we're solely waterfowl focused basically with our non-toxic tung tungsten matrix and then our Fast Steel. And to really get into the lead upland business, uh, we took those the same speed technology or those powders that we developed fast steel with and applied it to upland loads. And what you got in these upland loads that we branded fast lead uh, was heavy payloads and high velocities. Okay, so for hunting wild birds late season, uh, we, we have some tremendously effective loads where it, before fast lead, you could either choose a high velocity load at a standard payload, say like an ounce and a quarter, or a heavy payload at that ounce and a half, an ounce and three quarter, but you had to tame down the velocity. Here we gave you the best of both worlds in those and, and lead shot shells. And, uh, and we combined it with our premium diamond shot, which is highly polished, very uniform shot. That's another thing is, is we, we realize with tungsten matrix and then it is uh, that the only thing that comes in contact with what you're pursuing is the shot, okay? Out of all that you invest in, your time, your money, your de everything, the only thing that comes into contact with those birds is the shot. So Kent has spent a lot of time perfecting the shot that's available, tungsten matrix being one. Uh, we, in fast steel, we call it precision steel, and in fast steel 2.0, precision plated steel. What, you know, steel shot is, is is cut and grind, okay, and and you can get steel shot that's really rough and very mm -hmm. not very uniform, or you can process it longer to where it's basically perfectly round. Yep. And they elected to to go with that perfectly round steel because it's going to give you great patterns. Our lead uh, uh, perfected the, the diamond shot where it's where you, where it's highly polished and very uniform because we believe uniform is a key to consistent patterns. So a lot of time spent with the shot. We weren't just putting any steel or any lead in, in these loads. That, that was something that was, was going on um, after our founding was, even if we're not doing tungsten matrix, we're gonna put premium shot in our loads. Yeah. Okay, and then fast leads developed. Another load that I think is somewhat often overlooked because it's it doesn't have a lot of flash, uh, but we were talking about it this morning at breakfast was our teal steel load. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was purpose built for teal. Okay, we back off the velocity. We go with shot sizes five and six, so you get over 300 pellets in each load with an ounce and a quarter payload. Even our 20 gauge at one ounce, number six is still over 300 pellets in that payload. You know, think about when you're teal hunting. Okay, it's warm weather, close range, uh, so you, you, know, you don't need that high velocity when they're so close in. You also don't want the recoil when you're basically hunting in a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. you know, so you know, we, we looked and, 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 and put out teal steel that really uh, uh, has, has been a hit since we introduced uh, some of our other products. Uh, another really notable product, we were the first major manufacturer to come out with what I would call second generation bismuth. 
Bismuth has been around since really the days of Tungsten Matrix. It was one of the first high density non-toxic shot offerings, but it had some serious shortcomings. It was fragile, so it had a tendency to uh, fracture uh, mm -hmm. in, during the process of firing. And before it even exited the barrel, you lost a little bit of your pellet count. It wasn't very uniform, so your patterns weren't great. Uh, you know, we didn't load it because we had Tungsten Matrix, what we believe was far superior, but we recognized the price of tungsten was, was going up exponentially. Uh, we wanted to keep an option that was affordable for, uh, for most folks. So in the, uh, uh, in, around 2012, we started looking, 2010, 2012, we started looking at bismuth. And it took us about five years uh, in, our, in research and development to come up with our own proprietary bismuth pellet. It's, uh, we bind it with tin. Okay, and, and we, we believe the binding with tin, it gives it great structural integrity. It's not mm -hmm. coated or plated with some other material uh, because really that's just lipstick on a pig, okay? Yeah, in 2018, we rebranded uh, our, our bismuth uh, into what you see today into the 25 round boxes, uh, bismuth waterfowl and upland. Again, we'll put our, our proprietary bismuth up against anyone's because of, of the R&D that went into it uh, to make it a very consistent uh, pellet with a high degree of structural integrity. So you're not gonna get the fracturing that the first generation bismuth did and a very uniform, so it's gonna lead to really dense uh, dense even patterns out there. After bismuth, um, because uh, a lot of things had changed since we'd introduced fast steel in 1998, here we're 2018, 2019, you know, there'd been a lot of new guns brought to the market from all sorts of different countries. Uh, powder technologies had changed. Uh, we decided to uh, uh, completely make over the fast steel line with fast steel 2.0. And when you, if you compare original fast steel to fast steel 2.0, first thing you notice is our, we're using nickel case heads and then we're using precision plated steel uh, to give it an element of corrosion protection. So it's definitely, you know, we're not sealing it, uh, but we wanted to make it kind of weather resistant, uh, mm -hmm. add a little bit more. Uh, we talked about sealing it, but just uh, that would take it to a different price point that, that we, didn't, we didn't think Fast Steel was ready for yet. But uh, what we did was we worked with our whole manufacturer, because uh, we import those from France, uh, to come up with a, uh, they changed an internal component called a base wad to make it more forgiving in semi-autos because there had been so many different semi-autos brought to the market since 1998. I mean, think about, you know, the Super Black Eagle 1, 2, 3, the, you know, Winchester, you know, uh, SX, you know, SX1, 2, 3, and I think it's up to 4 now. A lot of different Beretta, uh, uh, Beretta offerings out there, different operating systems guns imported from different countries. Uh, you had the Remington Versamax, a completely different op operating system. So, so many different guns mm -hmm. out there. We just wanted to make, make a more forgiving load. And I think really uh, more so than anything, uh, believe it or not, there's duck hunters who don't clean their guns. Yep. So we wanted to make a, a very forgiving load and worked with them to develop a, a, a different base wad, what we call a high performance base wad. And we did some, uh, we changed the velocities uh, on some of our loads. Some of them we left the same, but uh, it is a new and improved load that's been out since 2019. And, and that rolls into today where uh, with Fast Steel Plus that we're introducing here in 2023. Now it's so 2023, we're here in West Virginia. We're heading over to the factory to check out how these shot shells are manufactured for, for you guys, the, the consumer, to go out and, and hunt. All right, this is Patrick out here with Matt, the plant manager for Kent Carters out here at the Kent plant facility in West Virginia and he's gonna kind of take us through the start to finish, um, little insight into how these uh, shot shells are made. Um, thanks for having us out here, Matt. Oh, welcome. So uh, um, kind of tell us, uh, so you're overseeing the whole show. Yep. Yeah. Do manufacturing operations here. Overseeing all the process of, uh, of everything going out the door. Take us through what we're seeing up on the top level here. Okay. All the loaders which sit below us right now are fed from the top side. We have components, our, our, our holes. Full in there. Wads. And then behind, behind us on this wall are the uh, tubes which feed from our powder bunkers. 
We have 12 of those individual rooms. They feed directly to the loaders from upstairs to minimize the powder on the, on the ground floor. Well, this is a typical loader we have here. Uh, all the components come in from the top side, powder, hull, wad. They're fed down into this track. Okay. And as they go along, various operations happen with powder, powder drop, wad drop, shot drop, and a lengthy crimping station at the end, as well as some quality check check beams and make sure the levels of powder and shot are all correct. So everything's done in one spot. Like this is the line for yes. one. And do you run one specific load? It goes through and it just, how do you know when you're stopping to move to the next shot size or next shell? We, we make a uh, certain amount of cases on that run. When those cases are done, operator stops and we, we reconfigure the machine. Uh, and the components for the next run. Okay, so the holes come in. We were kind of looking earlier, but you're starting with um, just the empty hole, pre-primed, ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay. We will start with, in this case, it is pre-printed as well on this on this machine at this run. And what's what this one making here? Right now we're making a, a 20 gauge fast lead load. Okay, awesome. And you're dropping them up top, those holes are coming down from the top? Yes, we have hoppers up top that drop the holes in, similar with the wads. The powder comes in from the backside of our overhead bunker. Okay, so is all the powder, it comes from a different area, it's stored? Yes, any... it's stored in individual hardened rooms upstairs for safety reasons. Gotcha. Minimal powder upstairs, very minimal on the floor. Okay. We probably have less powder than the average hand loader, uh, reloader at home. Gotcha. Oh, so floor. that hole comes down, and take me through it one more time. So it's dropping them in here, and then the next... The next stage will be the powder. The powder, drops the powder in. Yes. And then over here, the carousel will insert the wad. Okay. The next step, shot drop here. This is running two shells at a time. Okay. So every 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 operation is done twice at a time, gotcha. and then one, two, three, four different crimping stages. So it's a pro on on crimping. It's not all done at once. So it looks like it kind of cones it, and then mm -hmm. just keeps. Yeah, gotcha. It starts and then has a little bit of a dome to it, and then a spin crimp at the very end, and the, these two stations at the end. All right. So we've got our finished shell. Now we're kind of going transitioning to that boxing stage, the final prep gets put into the case to so kind of take us through that mat of, uh, of finished shell now into the case. So as it leaves the print the printing section, it'll roll into the, 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 the packer, which counts the 25 shells alternate. They're alternated before they get there. Okay. It'll insert them into the box, the flap closure. It'll come out, come out onto the table. Operator will apply a label, put them in the box, do the taper. And it's off to the warehouse. So the 25 are set, already ready to go, put in the box, comes out, label on, put them in the case, it's sealed up, and then it's added to the pallet at the end I'm seeing yeah. here. Added to the pallet, then off to the warehouse, and then off to Rogers. So start to finish is quick. How many are you doing? What's the time, like a per minute? We're running this one a little bit slow. We're running this one about 110 rounds a minute right now. 110 rounds a minute. Gotcha. Yeah, and does that differentiate between different shells, or is that kind of your average? That is, on this machine, like I say, this is a little slow for okay. this machine. Uh, yes, depending on the loading, yes. depending on the shot size, depending on... The shot amount, we run them slower or faster to get a quality product. Yeah, so it's a very efficient process. Everything's centrally located, boom, right through. Yes, quick. I like that. That's super cool. Jeff, talk a little bit about what, how, why you're proud of Kent and what's so great about the quality and the, the shot shows that you guys produce. Yeah, first of all, w what makes me proud to work for Kent is that we, we keep an end user focus. Okay, we know what folks are 
are out there using our products for. We want to make sure that they have a great experience. And we realize that they, that they hunt or shoot in many different conditions. So rather than just when we develop a load, rather than just developing that in a lab environment at 70 degrees, we, we put it under stress. We, uh, we take it to zero degrees and up to about 125 to test it out to see if it's still performing as we uh, as we intend it to and we don't bring it to the market if it doesn't and then there's specific loading techniques to make sure that we ensure consistency you know load fit uh, is a big one uh, pellet count accurate pellet counts is another that we pay really close attention to and we could probably load our products faster and, and make them a little less expensive but we've elected not to because we know that means something out in the field if we cut a corner what we would view as cutting a corner so if you look at uh, all of our products, they're designed to give you premium performance, but we try to keep it affordable, okay, yeah. uh, where we can. Yeah, obviously we have some top-end uh, products such as our bismuth and tungsten matrix, but our fast steel, fast lead, that's right in that, you know, premium performance at an affordable price that's slightly higher than opening price point products. You're getting a tremendous amount of performance. So everything we do is designed to to give the end user an edge in the field. And, and, and so we keep that focus, okay? Uh, we, we let it guide what we're, what we're doing, whether that's bringing out new product. We probably don't bring out as many new products as some of the other companies because we, we hold ourselves to some very high standards. All right, so we're back here with uh, Jimmy from Kent Cartridge. So we're, he's kind of the man that gives us the, the live results. We do these stress tests to make sure the standards are up to, to Kent's level. And uh, so kind of take us through what you had out in the room there and, and the variables you guys put on these. Uh, well, I start off with 70 degree temperature, then I go to zero and then 125. And 125, yeah. so you get the three different. And Temp obviously as a hunter, right, you're yeah. gonna have, right? Yep. It's not always gonna be 70 and sunny outside. No, it's not. So, um, so you put the shells, how long do you keep them in that? Four hours. Four hours, Four hours, make sure they get nice and cold yep. or hot. in a hot in the oven area. And then you come back here and you put them through what we're seeing here. It's pressure barrel. A pressure barrel, get a live test. Yep. You mind if we if we have you do one for us? That's fine. That'd be perfect. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna start off with the 70 degrees. Okay, 70 degrees. Zero degrees now on the stress test. So now we're going to 125 degrees. That'll be the last stress test. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. And the time frame on it, like we were talking about, what we want to do is you want to shoot these with it. You know, you, Jimmy's quick. But you you want you don't want to take no. 10 15 minutes to do it because that temperature then changes Change. so you're not getting a good yeah. result. Yeah. yeah, gotcha. So Pat got to see the ballistics lab shoot. What do we? About 30 plus rounds. Yeah, it was about 30 rounds at of different, Bastille Plus. Yeah, different temperatures. We got zero degree, we had 70 degree and 125, is that, that correct? That's correct. And what it is, it's a sampling of some of the R&D that we do in our load development here. When we, uh, when we start developing a load, we, we want to make sure it works at all temperatures because that's the conditions you're going to face in the field. And we hold ourselves to some really high standards. And, and what we saw today in real time with this test uh, represents uh, uh, the standards that we hold mm -hmm. ourselves to. So we, Fast Steel Plus, we're uh, publishing a 1,450 feet per second muzzle velocity in our 12 gauge, three inch ounce and a quarter configuration. That's what we were testing today. And at zero degrees, it came through in, a, in 10 shots at 1,425 uh, feet per second average yep. uh, with a low standard deviation and, and uh, within safe uh, uh, pressures uh, according to SAMI standards. At ambient room temperature, 
and that 1450 uh, published velocity came through at 1451. Oh, so we spot were on. It was spot on, well within our, our, our pressure uh, uh, limits uh, set forth by Sammy. And then at 14 or at 125 degrees, we came through at 1433. So yeah, we were, a little under, yeah, yeah, very consistent, and we really pride ourselves in that consistency. And and so again this is just a sampling we shoot many many rounds as we're developing these loads before we bring them to market to make sure that they're going to perform uh, time and time again for you and, and there's loads out there that that can the average can be off by hundreds of F, uh, feet per second the, uh, there can be, there and, can be. and we, we just make sure we hold ourselves to a very high standard so that's not from uh, you won't find that from a Kent product. Yeah, very consistent is what yeah. I've seen here. Hey, what I like to tell folks about Kent is is really what sets us apart is what's under the hood. And it was really a pleasure to show you guys that in the factory today. It starts with our internal ballistics, so load development, making sure that we're using the right powders for the appropriate load. Uh, then when we stick that on that uh, load on a machine some of the steps that we take to ensure consistency, load fit being one of them, pellet count being another, and then just rigorously testing that at, during the loading process with the periodic QC checks, and, and just taking a lot of pride in how, the, how, those, uh, uh, how that ammunition is being loaded. Uh, it, it's, really, it's really no secret sauce, uh, let's put it that way, but it, it's just doing a lot of the little things right all the time that leads to the consistency that we have and why I think uh, the end users come back to shooting Kent. So you, so you think Kent cartridge, Kent shot shells are the most consistent shot shell you think produced out there? I, I do, especially for the money. Uh, we, uh, we hold ourselves to a very high standard when we develop our loads uh, because we know the varying conditions that guys are hunting in. We want them to have a great experience. We want them when they're, when it's just a bad, bad cold day out there. They want their, we want their ammo to perform and them to, to come back smiling with birds on their straps. I mean, it's, that's what we do and that's why we, we hold ourselves to a very high standard. Um, and, and so in the, in the realm of like good, better, best or opening price point, mid range and, and, and higher end, we don't do the opening price point products, okay? Um, yeah, and we'll do we'll do that mid range and above. Yeah, because we want folks to have a great experience. Yeah, going into that, so 2023, we have a brand new load from you guys, Fast Steel Plus. Let's go into that. Yeah, Fast Steel Plus. That's uh, uh it's been a long time coming. We actually, uh, because of COVID, uh, we delayed introducing it. So we've been working on it for a while. It really started out a few years ago. Uh, I was on a, a sea duck hunting trip and I was talking to the outfitter about preferred shot size for these sea ducks, which are really kind of tough birds. And I was kind of expecting him to say, yeah, he likes the number ones or number mm -hmm. twos, a higher energy pellet. And he had a completely opposite take of what I was expecting. He said, you know, I like number fours. The reason he likes number fours is he says it gives you more chances, you have higher pellet count. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's understood. We know that. We got to thinking, how, how can we improve patterns and improve chances and, and still give energy? So we set out to improve the overall pattern on our loads, and, and we were looking at that and playing with some velocity and payload combinations. I mean, we've pushed the envelope. There's, we know how fast we can push steel shot shells and make it safe. We know how fast we can push it when you start seeing a diminishing return in the pattern. So we have this really wide performance envelope to toy with payload and velocity combinations. And so we, while we were working with that, we had a, a customer request for uh, two different shot sizes and said, okay, we'll take a look at it. Because we do, when we, when we have customers you know, ask us for certain products, we'll take a look at it and see if we can make it work. So you combine these two, two uh, shot sizes and, and what did you see? We saw the patterns improve exponentially. We were amazed. Uh, that was that was uh, internally. We're like, wow, what what is going on here? And we actually sent samples off to be third party tested. They sent us back the data, and it was significant. One thing that we noticed right away was an increase in uh, the pattern percentage. Okay, so our our products already perform pretty well when it comes to pattern percentage. 
but the jump from a single shot size load to a dual shot size load was on a percentage basis was significant. That was the first thing we looked at was, wow. Okay, in that 30 inch circle, these twos and fours or BBs and twos are putting a greater percentage of the overall pattern in that 30 inch circle at 40 yards than say a standard single shot size load of twos, BBs, ones, what have you. But what was really amazing was the uniformity of the pattern. And there's some tools we use to, to measure that. But the uniformity or evenness of it was remarkably better. So not only are you putting more, a higher percentage of your payload in, in that 30 inch circle at 40 yards, it's much more even than say a standard uh, single shot size load. And that's, that's the key there. So you've got, uh, you've got a high velocity or 12 gauge three inch, it's an ounce and a quarter payload at 1450. So that's a pretty high velocity. It could be faster, it could be slower if, if we wanted to, but that's the ideal velocity. It's gonna mm -hmm. give us great patterns and you combine it with uh, with the two shot sizes and that pattern just it, it is amazing on what it delivers uh, and, and we'll, we'll show you some of that visually when we go to shoot uh, but it's it, what we were finding is that the smaller shot size is drafting behind the air disturbances from the larger shot size and that's what's sucking in that pattern making it nice and even shortens the shot string well it might actually increase it a little bit really but little bit. but our, our take is on it at those velocities that's immaterial okay mm -hmm. you're you're if you're going to get hit with the lead uh yeah. the lead pellets you're going to get hit with the with with the, the pellets on the back end okay um so and we we've seen this we've been we've been killing stuff with this for two and a half years now so uh so in the field it's working out great but uh it's drafting behind and avoiding pellets flying off outside of the pattern yeah. where they're ineffective so then when you calculate the total energy in your pattern plus the total pellet count it's a significant advantage over single shot size load. So basically you're giving up, if you're a number two guy and you go and shoot your number two and four fast steel plus, you're getting in your pattern, okay, uh, what, what matters on the bird, you're getting significantly more pellets, but the total energy in that pattern is similar to the number two. If you're a number four guy, giving up a little pellets, not much, but then you're, 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 you're having remarkably increased energy because of the number twos. And it's always better in our, in our research than splitting the difference, say, with the number three, okay? Uh, so it's pretty, pretty unique. And, and we'll, we've got some data that we'll show you that kind of shows how things start and how they finish, okay? When you look at it on paper, on just a, as a, on a pellet count basis, it doesn't tell the story, but we can look at it on the pattern and see what actually, because it, it, how much the pattern improved, it it's something that's gonna mean something out there on the bird and, and, and they're gonna see it right away when they start using it. All right, so we're out here at the padding range. I'm with Hunter Colbert, marketing for Kent Cartridge. What are we doing today? So we're gonna be testing Fast Steel 2.0 and comparing it to our new Fast Steel Plus, which is a layered steel shot shell comparing it we're shooting at 40 yards so it should you should be able to see a pretty drastic difference from the original fast steel 2.0 to fast steel plus yeah i'm pumped uh fast steel 2.0 is great i'm excited to see fast steel plus on the patterning board first load that we're going to be shooting is fast steel 2.0 with an ounce and a quarter number two pellets we're going to run through twos threes and fours in fast steel 2.0 and then be able to show everybody the benefits of fast steel plus So this is the Fast Steel 2.0 ounce and a quarter number three at 40 yards. So now, last but not least, we're shooting Fast Steel 2.0 ounce and a quarter number fours. So now we'll, we will be pattern testing Fast Steel plus ounce and a quarter twos and fours. Wow, this is impressive, Hunter. What do we what do we see here on the on the board? 
So overall, there's no holes anywhere in this pattern. There's at 40 yards with a modified choke, you are not having anything fly through this pattern. Twos and fours, I mean, it's, you don't have the same amount of pellets that you do with a typical four load, but having twos mixed in with this pattern just makes it, well, the slogan, next level lethal. Yeah. It's, it is something that I've been super proud of to kind of be able to take it from its baby stages to we're a week away from having it be on shelves. It's a super cool thing to do and looking forward to seeing some end results this fall. So we just shot two and four shot. What else is offered in the plus line as far as a shot combination? So right now we have BB's twos, twos and fours, as you can see here, and fours and sixes. Gotcha. They're all gonna have very similar results with excellent, excellent patterns. Awesome. Well, I'm impressed with the Fast Steel Plus. Uh, really cool, Rogers is the first to have it. Um, it has come in preseason, not in the middle of the season. We are ready for 2023. Uh, Kent Fast Steel Plus is something I'm real, I look forward to shooting this year. And, and Jeff, I appreciate you going through everything. It's just so cool to come out here to West Virginia and see the full operation. Yeah, certainly Chandler, it's our pleasure to have you out. Kent has a story to tell and you know, our, our end users, I think, are going to find some value on this, and, and we're, we're glad to be bringing another great product to the market that's, uh, I think it's going to find its place for a long time. So for 2023, I hope you guys go out when you're at the store or when you're shopping our website, take a look at Kent Fast Steel Plus. Um, I know the quality's there. I've seen it firsthand. You're going to get a performance shot shell that is very consistent and it's going to do what it needs to do.